Ready? Okay, good. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Are you? Okay. Hey guys, welcome. So today's class is going to be a really nice uh, after work type of class. So good way to get a little bit of uh, energy ready, get ready for dinner. And it's only 30 minutes, so if you can't make it to yoga class or you know you have other stuff going on or if it's Friday night and you're ready for a, a night out in town, then today's class is perfect. And I have Tor with me today. She's going to be demonstrating and um, doing her yoga stuff. So let's hope that uh, if she can do it, then you can do it. <laughs> and, uh, and let's have some fun. All right, so let's get started. All right, let's get started with some yoga. So find a comfortable seated position. You could be seated in a sukhasana, a seated position like Tor here. Or if you'd like to kneel down, you can kneel on your heels. You could put a blanket between your legs um, and sit on that too. And so once you find a nice, comfortable seat, make sure that you're sitting with a tall spine like Tor has here, with a tall crown of the head, really reaching tall, and letting the shoulders relax down. And let your eyes come to a close. And from here, just notice how your breath is. You know, this class is meant for right after work, after a long day. And after a long day, the breath will tell us a lot about how we're feeling uh, physically, emotionally, um, you know, how our day went, how the evening is going to go. So just tap in. And with experience, you'll start to really be able to understand the language of your breath. And don't worry about modifying the breath, changing the shape. Find fullness to it, whatever fullness is available at this point. Notice the inhale or the exhale is longer. Notice that there's a sound to the breath. We're going to begin to shape the breath today through a simple breathing exercise, a pranayama called Nadi Shona, a channel purifying breath. And so with Nadi Shona, you're going to take your right hand out and bring the pointer and middle finger into the base of the hand. This is called Vishu Mudra. And then you're going to take the hand right in front of your face. Okay. Perfect. Okay, and so breathe in through both nostrils. As you exhale, close the thumb on your right nostril. Exhale and out through the left. And when you finish the exhale, inhale through the left. When you finish that inhale, close the left with the ring finger, open the thumb out through the right. Perfect. As you finish, in through the right. And you're going to close that right out through the left as you finish. And just continuing at the pace of your breath. If you're feeling congested today, you could do this just visualizing the same motion without the hand. If that right arm isn't feeling too good or if it's tired or sore, you could always use the left hand. That's perfectly fine. But as you do this, see if the breath can start to get a little bit longer. With every new inhale, let the breath maybe draw in a fraction of a second longer and match that with the exhale. See if you could relax and release with those exhales, releasing through the shoulders, releasing through the spine. Good. And instead of forcing the breath, see if you could invite it in. Feel as if it's um, like a good friend coming to visit you after work. We're going to repeat this a few more times. And you're going to see that the breath after Nai Shona is going to be very different than from beforehand. It's, um, it's a, a, unique, a unique technique right here. And after your next inhale through the right nostril, release that right hand down and continue the breath at a normal pace. And when the breath returns, notice what is it like now? What's the difference? How did the qualities of the breath change? Okay. 
See if you can find a symmetrical inhale and exhale. Same length, same duration, same tempo. I hope you're enjoying this as much as Tor is here. Let's get uh, some movement started. So bring your chin in towards your chest and start to slowly revolve your neck, taking a full inhale and exhale to revolve 360 degrees. Good. Now, one thing that you're going to notice about Tor here is that as she begins to revolve back, her chin is high and she's not crunching the back of the neck too much. You don't want to pinch off the cervical spine, the neck. So just small movements, it should be a silent movement. So if you're hearing any snaps, any crackles, any pops, if it feels like you're uh, you know, grinding some pepper, then you're going a little bit too deeply. So try to back out that way. And taking a breath or two more, revolving in this direction. Good. And next time the chin is by the chest, switch directions. Good. Notice if anything's different on this side. We are very asymmetric. And those asymmetries are totally fine, totally expected, just honoring those. Instead of feeling like the body should be a certain way, just let it be the way it is, and it's going to self-adjust with time and with love. Keep the shoulders relaxed, keep the hands relaxed, keep the elbows heavy. About one more breath or so here, one more revolution. Good. And next time the chin is by the chest, with the inhale, pick the head back on up. In the crown, the head's reaching tall, the spine's tall. Again, let's bring the shoulders up towards the ears. And as you exhale, just relax them down. Good. Inhales on up, exhales down. If you want to exhale out the mouth like Taurus here, go for it. Just straight up and down. We'll get into neck rotation or shoulder rotations in a moment or two. Good. And now very organically, start to add a rotation here. So taking the shoulders forward and up with those inhales, exhaling back and down. And same idea as the neck here. You don't want to go 100% in. You don't want to crunch through the shoulders. You're trying to lubricate. You're trying to bring a little bit of joy, of lightness, of easiness. This should feel really freaking good. And if it's not, then back out a little bit until it does. Good. Next time the shoulders are at their highest point, begin to rotate the other way. Exhaling forward and down, inhaling back and up. Nice. If you're enjoying this so much that some weird sounds are starting to come out of your mouth, that's perfectly fine. If your significant other, cat, dog, roommate is looking at you all weird, then have them join you next time. Good. A few more times. Nice, luxurious shoulder rotations here. Beautiful. Next time the shoulders are up by the ears, scrunch up, even scrunch up through the face. Take a breath or two here, scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. And when the next exhale comes, shoulders back and down, relax through the face. Let's take the palms together in front, interlace the hands, and start to bring the elbows together as you start to rotate the wrists, coming into figure eights here. Good. So going in one direction does not matter which one. This feels really goofy, and it is... Tor here has practiced it a lot. If it does not feel this natural for you, don't worry. Uh, just one thing here is make sure that the shoulders still stay back, that you're not jetting them forward, that the elbows aren't jetting forward, and that you're not pinching around your thoracic spine, your upper back here. Good. And now ready for the fun part? Let's try to switch directions. <laughs> Good. So staying there the other way, if you can figure that out, it's a little bit of a brain game there. Good. A couple more rotations. There you go. I think I saw Tor cheat right now. I think she switched back to the first side. <laughs> Good. Let's shake out the hands. And with the next inhale, take the arms wide and up towards the ceiling. Good. And now from here, really take the shoulders down the back while you reach the hands up, up, up. Engage through the abdomen. Try to find more length in the spine. Reach the crown, the head up. Take a few breaths here, feeling the entire spine reaching longer, feeling the stretch there. Good. And when the next exhale comes, leaning forward over your legs, taking a bit of a forward fold here. Relaxing the head down, relaxing the hands. It does not matter how far forward you come at all. Good. Few extra long exhales here, relaxing again through the spine, relaxing through the shoulders, relaxing through the jaw. And right here, feel free to take all that stress that you developed throughout the day and just relax it on out. 
coming back into your own strength right here, into your own peace, into your own serenity. Good. A couple more breaths, nice and simple. Next inhale, coming on up. And begin to find your way onto all fours. So now with all fours, if you know that your knees are a little bit of a sensitive issue, you could take a mat and, or a blanket, excuse me, and unfold it like this. We'll actually put them under Tor's knees here. So bring your knees up, Tor. Yeah, there we go. And then settle right back down. Perfect. So take the hands right underneath the shoulders. Press the hands into the ground. We'll open up through the wrists in a little bit. But let's come into our cat cows here. So the next inhale, hips up, chest forward, stomach dips. Good. Exhale, round through the spine. Press through the hands. Bring that spine on up. Good. Moving with the pace of your breath here. Nice. Notice how Tor keeps the spine nice and rounded, nice and long. Good. There's no crunching. Notice how she engages her abdomen here with those exhales. Keep that up. Few more times, pace of your breath. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Nice. And now when your next inhale comes, come back to flat. We're going to open up through the wrists a little bit. So take your hands and begin to bring the fingers away from one another. So keep right on all fours, just like you were. Mm -hmm. And start to shift your body left and right. Okay, just starting to open up into the wrists, starting to open up into the hands, around the fingers too. Good. And then this is going to be different forever, and it might feel good to bend one of the elbows as you start to come forward, finding your play, your variation, a little bit of sway here. Good. Next inhale, come back to center. And let's turn the fingers all the way back towards you, so other way, so then exactly. And now from here with the exhales, begin to sit the hips towards the heels and start to find that opening through the wrists. With the inhales, come forward. You're going to want to do this very slowly, very mindfully. So exhales again. Back. You can even take the heels of the hands off the ground, getting into the fingers too. Perfect. Inhales coming on forward. Pace of your breath. Nice and slow. If you have a desk job, it's really, really nice to open around the wrist to avoid uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, tightness, uh, anything like that. Good. A couple more times here, and then we'll, we'll start to heat it up a little bit. Good. And next time you sit towards your heels, sit all the way back towards your heels. You could sit your hips to your knees and just sit all the way on up. Yeah, exactly. And then take your hands forward like your Frankenstein. Bring the thumbs in, the fingers around, and start to revolve around the wrists. Nice. Good. A few more times right here. And let's switch directions, going the other way. Beautiful. And notice how Tor keeps her hands reaching away from her. It's going to start to create a little bit of heat in the shoulders, but that heat is going to help support you. It's going to create a little bit of heat in the forearms. It's going to create some heat in the wrists. Don't escape from that. Keep it up. It's going to help protect you in all fours when we start to load some weight onto our arms. All right, and let's just shake out the hands a little bit, loosey-goosey. Cool. Let's come back to all fours. Nice. With the next inhale, draw the right leg straight on back. Good. Reach the heel on back, trying to bring it in line with the hip. Reach a crown head forward and engage the abdomen. So I should be able to put something like a cup fati right on your low back here. Good. With the next inhale, see if you can create a little bit more space, reaching that heel back, reaching the crown of your head forward. And now from here with the next exhale, let's squeeze everything together, drawing that knee in towards the chin, rounding the spine like you did in that cat pose. Inhales on back, moving with the pace of your breath, trying to create as much length of those inhales. So the exhales are going to be the big motion here. That's going to be the big engagement. But create as much space as you can with those inhales. Let the inhales be just as important as those exhales. A few more times here. We do want to create a little bit of heat. If you're doing this before dinner, this is a great way to stoke a healthy digestion for your dinner, especially uh, for us. That tends to be the biggest meal of the day. Um, and we want to be able to be revved and ready, especially if we're sitting in a, de in a desk all day and then we go to eat uh, 12 steaks or whatever dinner might be. Good. Next time you inhale back, reach long, 
Hold that for about three breaths. Every inhale, it's going to be the slightest sensation. Get a little bit longer. Every exhale, engage. Squeeze a little bit more around the abdomen. Find as much length as you can. Be tall. Be strong here. Good. And with your next exhale, settle the knee down, and let's push back to a child's pose. Hips towards the heels, knees away. Just a couple breaths as the forehead relaxes down towards the ground. Just notice how the two sides of your body feel different. Notice how that's already affected your body. Now, if you're not as flexible as Tor here, something that might be really nice is that you could take a block and you could take it underneath your forehead. So that'll be fine. And then the hips don't have to sit on the heels too. Good. And that's enough rest right there. Let's come back to all fours. Good. And that's side two. So left leg is going to inhale straight back. Crown head reaches forward again. Couple breaths here, find that length. Feel almost as if there's someone pressing into that back heel and kick it away. Good, with that same engagement, do the same with the crown of your head. So really press the crown of your head forward, good. And now from this point, with the next exhale, squeeze everything together. Excellent. Inhales, growing nice and long, about three, four, five times or so. Nice. Good. Support with those inhales. Nice rounding with the exhales. Draw the navel to the spine. Excellent. With those inhales, engage that left thigh. Really press the leg on back. Mm -hmm. You'll notice a small little thing that Tori does here too is that when she exhales, her spine lifts up a little bit. I'm sorry, with the inhales. She starts to work into the scapulas a little bit. She supports her entire back, her shoulders, and her arms by utilizing some more muscles. So that's something you could play with right there if it makes any sense. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Next exhale, bring the knee on down. Okay, and we're going to go straight into a little more heat uh, building. Let's take the right leg back again. Mm -hmm. With the next exhale, draw the knee in. Now this time you're going to inhale, revolve the leg around and back. So you're going to start to make some big hip circles here. Good. Mm -hmm. And let this feel pretty good, but move nice and slowly with the pace of the breath. Nice. And from here, you're going to want to keep, exactly as Tor has, both shoulders straight down. You're going to want to try to keep this right hip point pointing pretty much on down so the stomach is pointing on down. Good. Now you're going to feel a lot of work in the abdomen. That's exactly where we want this to be. Next, exhale. Bring the knee on down. And... No rest again. Let's bring the left leg straight on back. Exhale, bring it on in. And inhale, revolve it around and back. Perfect. So same idea right here. You have a bit of a different angle. So now you notice that the hip's moving up a little bit. That's fine here, but her abdomen's pointing straight on down. That's a lot of engagement there. It's going to be a lot of engagement in her obliques right there, in the side of her abdomen. Notice how her fingers are pressing into the mat, how there's space between each finger here. Notice how our arms are straight and the crown of her head keep re keeps reaching forward. It's a lot of engagement, it's a lot of small things right here, but you're going to feel it through the body, even in this very simple move. All right, next exhale, bring the knee on down. Okay, let's set the hips towards the heels, but not completely as open as child's pose. So we're going to create a little bit of a vinyasa, a little bit of a movement here. So with the next inhale, you're going to bring the torso low and slide your way forward, coming all the way into a cobra pose. Mm -hmm. Good. With the exhale, press the hands down, set the hips up and back into that same position you're just in. So you're going to have this revolution right here. Inhale, sliding forward to cobra. Exhale, revolving the hips back and down. If the blanket under you feels good, keep it there. If it doesn't feel good, then remove it at any point. And now this is going to look different for every person. Yours might be staying close, close, close to the ground and then revolving a big motion up. It might be more like Tor, where the arms stay pretty straight the whole way. Let this be your own experience. Play around with it. Listen to your body. Make sure it feels good. You do not have to go nearly as deep into the cobras as Tor. She has a flexible back, and, I, and she's like 20 years old. So that's definitely going to help out there. Good. And now we're going to start to upgrade this motion a little bit. So next time you come back, tuck the toes. Let's push back all the way into down dog. So first down dog of this class of the session might be the first down dog of your day. Maybe you work at a down dog office and you've done this all day. 
Wherever you are, just see where you are. So feel free to shake out the hips, feel free to pedal out the feet, shake the head, do whatever feels good. We'll have future tutorials where we really break down different poses, especially major ones. But right now, don't worry so much about the shape that this takes. Make sure that the shoulders feel light, that the shoulders feel supported. Make sure that there's a nice, gentle stretch in the backs of the legs. Feel free to bend the knees, especially if you feel a lot of weight in your low back or the shoulders. Good. And now from here, we're going to add that vinyasa element again. So with the next, this one's going to be a little bit slower. So with the next exhale, slowly drop the knees. Keep the hips back. Good. So knees will drop all the way down. Mm -hmm. Inhale, slowly slide forward and up into your cobra pose. And then exhale, tuck those toes back to down dog. Engage the abdomen to get all the way back into that. Good. Nice big inhale and down dog. And then the exhale, we'll take the knees down slowly. Inhale, slide forward. Good. Exhale, up and back. Nice. Good. So creating a little bit of heat here. If this is too much, keep the knees on the ground the whole time and just do that thing that we just did before. Motion does not have to be big. If you want more of a challenge here, slow, especially this lowering right there. It's going to fire up the core. It's going to give the legs a nice workout right there. Let this transition right there. Use the back, use the abdomen, and use the arms too. You see that torso actually shaking a little bit here. Some heat is definitely being created. Good, one more time here. Smooth transition, stay low. Try this time to stay really low. Bend those elbows, good, and then come into it. There we go. You can even come into Sphinx pose like towards right here. And now from here, it's come back to the down dog and stay in down dog here. Nice. So for this down dog, we're gonna go a little bit longer with it. We're gonna go a little bit more into it. So again, press those hands really far down to the ground, especially the underside of each knuckle. Feel free to bend the knees, and you're going to try to lift those hips up and away from you. Good. Now notice how long of a spine Torah has here. Notice how there's a straight line from the hips through the shoulders right into the hands. That's perfect. And now if the heels don't touch the ground, who the F cares? It does not matter. But just find that engagement of the legs. It almost feels as if the bones of the legs are trying to reach beyond the skin right there. So it's a deep engagement in the legs. Good, let's hold for a few more breaths. Make sure that you're still breathing. Make sure that you could feel the low back, the side body, and the stomach expand with the breath. Little bit more here. Nice, let's do one more pose to build a little heat in the legs, and then we're gonna take some uh, nice easy stuff to end off class here. So bending at the knees, look between the hands. We're going to come up towards an Utkatasana. So the next inhale, find your way forward. You could step, you could hop, front handspring, and then slowly roll the spine up with bent knees. Yeah, come all the way up to standing. And now from here, take the arms up and wide towards the ceiling. Good. Shoulders relax. Feel the heels press into the ground. There we go. Feel the legs press into the ground but the torso is nice and light. Now, keeping the same lift in the torso, let's take the hands to your hips. Like you're sitting straight into a chair, bending at the knees. Hips come down and back. Tailbone slightly tucked, so you keep this nice, long spine. Good. Option one, stay where you are. Option two, draw the hands forward as if you're holding a, uh, a Thanksgiving turkey in front of you. And option three, if you want to take the arms up and overhead, go for it. Now, be careful. So just for um, discussion right here, take the arms more back. Notice how Taurus spine begins to round when the arms come up and back. If the spine's rounding, then just don't worry about taking them too far forward. Let them be wherever they are. You want this nice flat spine that's going to protect the low back. Good. Draw the palms together in front of your hand. In front of your face, I should say. That makes more sense. And now from here with the next exhale, just a slow chop, taking the hands over towards the left side of the body, keeping the legs and the lower body exactly where it is. Good. Next inhale from the strength of the stomach, bring the hands back to neutral position. Exhale, side two. Twisting nicely through the spine and moving with the pace of your breath. Good. 
Notice how her legs don't move. Notice how her low back right here keeps pretty still, how she's twisting through her thoracic spine. Right where the lumbar and thoracic spine meet, that's where you're going to get the most mobility in the spine, right in that middle back area. Now, if you want to challenge yourself, you can sit a little bit deeper. If you want to challenge yourself, you can begin to hook the elbow over the knee and coming into prayer hands here. Yeah, let's try that out for a couple more times. Perfect. Nice. A couple more times. Literally that. One on each, each more side here. Good. Last one. And now from here, keep Utkatasana. Torso comes back up. And ex exhale, fold over the legs, standing forward fold. Yeah, take a few breaths. Feel free to bend the knees. Feel free to shake through the elbows or shake through the head. Anything that feels good here. Just letting yourself pour over through the upper back. Nice. Couple more breaths. Making sure that the neck is nice and relaxed. Shoulders easy. And when the next exhale comes, begin your slow descent back to the mat. Mm -hmm. Coming into a comfortable seat. Mm -hmm. Good. And before anything else, just take stock. Notice how you're feeling. Maybe the eyes come to a close. Notice how the spine feels. Does it feel any taller? Good. So we're going to leave you at a point of um, a little bit of motivation, a little bit of heat in the body, a little bit of fire. So we'll end class with some Nadi Shona. The tour is going to get it started here, uh, and then we're going to just cut the video. So feel free to go as long as you want to. Sometimes you get into a really nice space. You might want to practice for five to ten minutes or so. So let's take the hand back into Vishnu Mudra, framing out the nose. This time we're going to start on the other side. So let's inhale through both nostrils. Close the right nostril with the thumb. Exhale out the left. Good. In through the left. Closing off the left with the ring finger. Open the thumb out through the right. In through the right. Closing that right out through the left and continuing at the pace of your breath. Again, forever long, this feels good. If you want to take a shavasana after, if you want to do some nice deep stretching after, all good options. Otherwise, enjoy the, the rest of your day. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again real soon.